Well, we had a, an event occur <clears throat> with uh, Andrew Carnegie's estate back in uh, 1915, 1916, 1917. He was a uh, strong proponent of homeopathic medicine. And up until then, the physicians in this country were mostly eclectic, like I am, meaning they used traditional medicines like herbal medicines and homeopathic remedies and dietary um, strategies to heal. And what that focus was, was to get the self-healing potential of the human being turned on full steam. And then you could help along the way with certain things to get somebody over disease. So back in 1900, if you live to the age of 45, you are virtually guaranteed to live to the age of about 80 without suffering any chronic degenerative disease. You just simply didn't wake up one morning. You died of what's called natural causes. We did have a high infant mortality rate back then. So when they average it out, they say, oh, the average American only lived to 45, but that's not true. The, uh, the problem was is that we had a very high infant mortality rate. Mm. So we were healthier back in 1900, way healthier than we are today. If you live to the age of 45, you got over some of the, um, some of the germs that were hitting and, and so on and so forth. Now roll forward to today. Today we start really getting sick about the age of 45 and modern medicine, allopathic medicine, uh, which is defined as to make and to render something incompatible with life, like a, like a germ or like cancer. You wanna use toxic substances, uh, surgery, radiation therapy, chemotherapy to kill uh, the cancer that's inside the human body and yet there's been really no serious increase in success rate since 1950 with the use of that approach to dealing with cancer. There have been plays with the statistics, but when you look at it from an epidemiological point of view, um, you really haven't uh, dented uh, the onslaught of cancer nor some of these other chronic degenerative diseases. So I'd like to talk to you about that today. Sure. Yeah. Um, so allopathic medicine now is starting to get into immunotherapy. And immunotherapy offers a great deal of promise. Uh, this is not vaccine therapy. Uh, vaccine therapy has had a lot of um, hype to it, but there's only been smallpox vaccine that has caused any sort of significant change with a, the course of an infectious disease. If you look at the real stats, say for example with polio, um, polio was almost completely gone by the time the first vaccines came out. Right. If you look at the declines in, um, in the other uh, germs that are being treated now with vaccines, uh, and you really dig, you really seriously look at the graphs, you notice that the herd, mentality, uh, herd uh, immunity that's been talked about was already in place, was already starting before the vaccines actually had any major effect. And this is missed by the medical community as a whole, that, that it's this herd immunity, which is the self-healing potential of the human being, which is being largely not addressed today in, it, in terms of its causal factors.